Hello and welcome. Today's presentation is on how to name organic compounds and this is presented to you by Science Visualized. The first functional group we look at is alkenes and alkenes ends with A-N-E, alken. An example of that is this alken that has one, two, three and four carbons and because it has four carbons the name is butane. See the ending A-N-E. Butane. Next, we look at this cyclic alkene, and that cyclic alkene has one, two, three, and four carbons. So each corner is a carbon, and because it's, it has four carbons, then the parent name is going to be butane because it has four carbons. But now because it's cyclic, you add this word cyclo, so the name becomes cyclobutane. Next, we look at alkenes. Alkenes contain double bond. So it has carbon, carbon, double bond. And the name ends with E-N-E. -E. So remember, alkenes was A-N-E. -N -E. Now alkene is E-N-E, -N -E, meaning a double bond. An example of that is this compound here that has one, two, three, and four carbons. And because it's four carbons, we say but, and then because it's an alkene, now, in. It ends with in. And because the double bond is on the first carbon, number one, then we say one butene. Or you could say but one in. But generally, because it's on number one, we don't have to say that. So just butene will work. In this next example, we see that the double bond is between carbon number two and number three. And still, it has four carbons, so the parent name is still butene, but now we have to show the position of the double bond. It's on carbon number two and three, because two is lower, then it becomes two butene, or you say but two in. Next, we look at alkyl halides. So it has an alkyl group and halide, so Rx, where the halide, the X part, can be chlorine, bromine, iodine, or fluorine, group 7A in the periodic table. If you look at this first example here, we have this carbon number one is connected to iodine, so it's an alkyl iodide, and then two, three, and four carbons. And because it's four carbons, then the name becomes, the parent name becomes butane, but now you have iodine on carbon number one, so that's iodo for iodine. So it becomes one iodo butane. Or you could just say iodo butane because if it's position number one, you don't have to show the position. In this example, we see that the bromine is connected to carbon number two and the alkyl part has one, two, three, and four carbons, so it's still a butane. And therefore, the name becomes, we have to show the position of the bromine. So 2-bromo-butane. Butane is the parent name. So that's the parent name. Always end with the parent name. And then the side group is a bromo on position number two. Next, alkynes. So alkynes ends with Y-N-E. That means a triple bond. So you have... A triple bond. An example of that is this structure here, which has carbon number one, two, three, and four if we count from the left. If we count from the right, it will be one, two, three, and four, but we want the triple bond carbon to have the lowest position possible. So if we count from, from, the, from the left, we see that it's on position number one, but if we count from the right, then it will be on position number three. But we want the lowest possible. And therefore the name becomes one butyne or but one ein. But because it's on position number one, then we don't have to indicate that. We could just call it butyne. So most of the time you just see it called butyne. But if you look at this next example, 
the position of the double, of the triple bond is not on carbon number one, and therefore we have to show the position on the name. Now, if you count from the left, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. But if we count from the right, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we see from the right, the triple bond will be on position carbon number four, but counting from the left, it will be on position number three. So the counting from the left wins. And therefore, the name of that will be three. And then because it has seven carbons, that's heptane. So three hep instead of N, A N E is for alkane, so it becomes heptine because now we're dealing with triple bond. Or you could just say hept three ion. Next, alcohols and alcohols have OH group. So if you look at this example here, we see that it has carbon one, two, three, and four. So it has four carbons. And because of that, the name becomes butane. And then because it's an alcohol, the OH, you change the E. So butane, you change that and replace that with all. And now the name becomes butanol. And because it's on position number one, you could say one butanol, or we don't have to show that one. Or you could say but, buten one all. Now let's look at the next structure, this one here. If we count from the right, you have carbon number one, number two. So the OH is on carbon number two, and then three and four. So because it has four carbons, it becomes butan. And then we show the position of the OH, so two all so butan butan to all or you could say two butanol next functional group is ethers ethers contain carbon oxygen carbon bond so carbon oxygen carbon or alkyl group oxygen alkyl group and that's called an ether so an example of that is here where you have an alkyl group with two carbons an alkyl group with two carbons one and two and then on the right, you have another alkyl group, and that one has one, two, and three carbons. So how do you name this compound? The alkyl group that we have on the left has two carbons, and therefore the name is ethyl. Ethyl. You replace the A and E with YL. Ethyl. And then on the right, we have three carbons, and therefore the name is propyl. And then comparing... E for ethyl and P for propyl, alphabetically, E comes before propyl, so the name becomes ethyl, so that one there, propyl, and then you finish with ether. Ethyl, propyl, ether. Let's look at the next example. So this one here, you have one alkyl group here that has one, two carbons, so that's ethyl, and another alkyl group here, as one and two carbons, that's another ethyl, and we know it's an ether because there's an oxygen in between, and therefore the name becomes ethyl, ethyl, ether. But because there are two ethyls, then we can combine these two together, it becomes di. So di is because there are two di, ethyl, ether. Next, we look at ketones. And ketones has an alkyl group on one side, a carbonyl in the middle, and another alkyl group on the other side. While an aldehyde has an alkyl group on one side, a carbonyl, and then a hydrogen on the other side. So in this example, we have an alkyl group, a carbonyl, and then another alkyl group, and that makes it a ketone. Now, how do we name this compound? You want to name it in such a way that the carbonyl group has the lowest number. So if we count from the right, it will be one, two, three, and four. So it will be on carbon number three, which is not good. But if we count from the left, it's one, two, three, and four. And four. So that's better. So we have to start from the left. So if we start from the left, then the carbonyl is on carbon number two. And because it has four carbons, so it's still a butane, so it becomes 
butane and then two to show the position of the carbonyl and then you finish with o and e so ketones have to end with o and e so butane two on or you could move that number two and put it before the name and then it becomes two dash butanone next we look at aldehydes and we said aldehydes have alkyl group on one side carbonyl in the middle and then a hydrogen on the other side if you look at this example here, that's an aldehyde because you have an alkyl group on this side, you have a carbonyl in the middle, and then you have a hydrogen. So how do we name that? We see that the carbon with the carbonyl is carbon number one, and then two, three, and four. It has four carbons, so the name becomes butane, and then because it's an aldehyde, we finish with an AL. So the name ends with AL and therefore it becomes butanal. Next, carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids have alkyl group, carbon oxygen double bond, and then OH. The other way to write it will be RCO2H. So in this case, we have carbon number one, number two, number three, and therefore it has four carbons. And therefore the name is going to be butane. But because it's a carboxylic acid, you end it with oic acid. So butanoic acid. Last one, amines. Amines contain nitrogen or NH2 or NH groups. So in this case, we see that we have the NH2 there connected to that carbon number one, and then two, three, and four. We have four carbons. And because we have four carbons, then the name there is butane. And then we say one amino, amino butane. But because it's on carbon number one, we don't even have to say that one amino. So we'll just say amino butane. Some people can name it as alkyl amine. So in that case, it will be butyl. Butyl amine. Thank you very much for listening. Please support this channel by liking the videos and also by subscribing and also commenting on the videos. Thank you.